Kadash. Kadash opening. We want to make World Loser think. Because he's so quick, you know? I have so much experience with this. He's handled this pretty well, though. I like the way he's playing it. Most people don't don't handle it nearly as well. I would say he's playing it like fairly optimal, optimal, optimal prime. Not many people do, and he's used no time in doing so. It didn't have any effect playing the weird opening. Damn. No effect. God damn it, Jerry. The weird opening had zero effect on him. He just didn't even care. Not even mildly phased. Who's the sus player? Me? Where do I go here? Why play without thinking? You should try a different game. Like Pokemon or something. Seriously, Bob, if you don't like thinking, like, why are you playing chess? Not just you, but a lot of people, probably. You should ask this question of. Presumably, you know, Chess is supposed to be a game for thinking, despite popular conceptions. Memorization? What's that? Dude, I hate memorizing stuff. You're joking, right? Do you think we're all like Sam Shankland? That's a total misconception. World Loser's playing a really, really strong game here. He must be heavily mo motivated in this game. Hevel heavily motivated. Heavily motivated. Right. Okay, what's the problem? Mm-hmm.
Wait, what does that do? Right? He's playing like a positional powerhouse. What's up with that move? He's going for this unclear sacrifice here.
Does black win material? Well, maybe if they specifically suggest a move for, for my opponent. But I haven't seen any. Wait, black is down what? Black is down a piece? All right. Well, then if he wins material, it won't be so bad. Like Bishop is just a miracle worker for me. That's like a typical <laughs> loss position that I won. Whew. I don't know about good game, but nice survival. Yeah, it's the last time I tried to throw a weird opening at World Loser. Some people it really phases them, but if anything, it had a negative effect. He, he just seemed to be like immune. I mean, there's no argument for me that I was lost. <laughs> there's no question, you know, it's just a question of how many times and exactly how. Uh-oh, Arsenal stayed with us. And, um, oh, guys, don't forget. Cheer to take number two. Bob, thanks for the gift sub. We had a first gift sub of the week. Special gift sub from Bob. Sparkle Horse with four, World Loser with three, Arsenal, Camel Culture, Arsenal with three, 2.5 uh, for Camel Culture, AP, Sumahair, Mahar, Inferno, Uber Driver, and Sigourney all have two. Trip Chance sneaking in. Dinekis with one and a half, Ruslan one, Yerun, thanks for coming by, one. Husky one, Pandy Pro one, Acerbate one. Acerbate got me a buy. Yeah, um, no, I should play, I already played Arsenal, oh crap, yeah, I've got to play, then I'll have to play Camel Culture, unless there's like a forbidden pairing based on colors, but he's only played two games, so I'll play Camel Culture, yeah, you've got to play World Loser, unless one of you had three whites, that wouldn't be possible, this early in the tournament, Blitz Greek edition, We've got multiple Greek players and Ukraine. At least two from Ukraine, two from Greece. Um, camel culture. 
Yeah, I'm done playing H4 in this tournament. We'll go back to our old standard. This is a move that requires me to think the least, because I've played it the most. Last game took a lot of energy out of me, like surviving that Kadas. Kadash Gabor. <laughs> I never met Kadash Gabor, although he was alive until a few years ago. The H4 is named after him. My point is that H4 is better than the Grob. The only really good thing that, to say about H4 is that it is absolutely, positively better than the Grob. It was just, uh, was I looking at today? Oh. Yeah, anti, classic anti King's Indian attack. Tori reversed. Mr. Coffee in reverse. Well, you're here, Bob. Camel Culture's here. Uh, Husky's here. I'm here. Aldisto's not here. Alms hasn't been here for a long time. Schieberspieler has been busy with school. I think he's just busy with school. And uh, XL Poker, I don't know what he's doing. Move 11. What other strong players normally play? I lost inspiration with Black against Fridman. In a tournament where I had a really good chance for a GM norm, it ruined my tournament. It's such a drawish system for white. I've literally lost sleep over that. Never agree to play on your rest day because you're a nice guy. That's the number one thing I took away from that. What was I thinking, you know? Why did I have to volunteer to play on my rest day? Because someone else was like late to the tournament. What a stupid idea. What am I thinking in that situation? Why? Why would I do that? That destroyed my tournament. I was plus three and agreed to play on my rest day. It was like one of the dumbest things I've ever done. For no apparent reason, just just because I thought it would be, it would be like a, a goody goody thing to do. Hey, let's throw away our rest day, in a in a like nine round tournament. What's up, W J Loof? Good to see you. The clutcher is breaking. You know, I've often thought about this in this cat in this camel culture Karo Khan type of structure. Like, do you really want to play c5 when your bishop's already outside of the pawn chain? Like, you don't have a bad piece, so you don't even need to play it. That's kind of an interesting discussion point, I would say. Why play c5 when you don't have a bad bishop? You're like trying to break out, you know. Just thought for the day. A lady came banging on everyone's doors because she lost her dog. Do you live in like do you live in like a suburban area or or how is it? Suburban Bob. Man, I should start playing the C3 Sicilian. My actual intention was to take with the bishop, but I'm like, well, I don't really like being pinned. Man, the neighborhood where I lived, it was like a housing, a homeowner's association. It was horrible. I wanted to like kill myself. Wow. What is going on here?
Bob, you're so like Joe Rogan. Go on, Rogan. <laughs> Bob, you probably like Joe Rogan, right? You have a lot in common. <laughs> you like to talk about hot topics? That's, that's, that's a common argument, you know? You're not, uh, yeah, he is more of a free thinker than most, most people assume. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Cause I was curious, but not many, just a couple. I saw this article, you know, where this woman had the same kind of opinion. You know, she, she thought he's more of a free thinker than she said that she started, she started to, to like, channel him, like, almost. It was weird. At the end, she, she couldn't listen to him anymore. But yeah, I mean, you gotta, you gotta, um, think for yourself on stuff. I just want to stir up the beehive a little here. Nothing interesting, nothing interesting has come up yet today. Sam Politnik. Ooh, we got we got camel culture in kind of an unpleasant position here. He's right up he's teetering on the brink. How is he not losing material? Man. It's frustrating. He's a teeter totter. Brinkmanship. At least we like distracted Bob from from trolling me. Give him something to, to banter about. Get him out of my hair. Get on my hair, Bob. Damn it, I don't know. How do I crack him here? Do I play like C4? C4? Anyone? That can't be right, Master. That move's gotta be bad. This is crazy. Say bye bye to the pawn structure as we know it. And Camel Culture is, is dangerous tactically and positionally. He's quite good. He seems all around. Bob, your favorite subjects are taboo subjects. Of course you like it. Are you serious? What's not to like? How can you not like someone who, who like, you know, can incite hatred? All right, Bishop takes B7. What's up? We grab the pawn, grab him by the pawn.
Plus, he's racist, so that helps. That's important in your book, right? All right. We're going to really stir it up now. What am I doing here? Oof. Does this work? Wow. Does this even work, Knight C6? Don't start asking questions. No questions. I just made a random move. Haha. Uh -huh. Well, at least I have that one thing. <clears throat> More than some people around here. Clinging to my extra pawn. It was Jeff Klinger. I don't know if this is a good move, but I'm going to play it anyway. You couldn't resist. Now what? What was wrong with 95 in the first place? Not really sure. Forkington. Chester Forkington. That's Bob's new chess name. Whoa. Everything's hanging. OMG. Oh, this is interesting. Mucho dinero. Where's the mate? You have that? That's a neat trick. You you had me fooled there for a little bit. Oof, we beat we beat it's been a while since we beat the chemical culture. Alright. 
Well, I did get lucky. Actually, I did beat him the last time, but that was something. I'm not sure what that was. All right. Been taking my my opportunities here. So we beat the evil camel culture. We beat Arsenal. We beat World Loser. Well, we got the point anyway. You get the point. Let's see. Uber Driver is still playing. The evils of Uber Driver. Uber Driver has 20 seconds to the guy's 4 minutes. Holy shit. Uber Driver is actually fast. Wow. This is like Jim's brother. Oh, so it's Jim, Dinekis, and Sigurd Johnson. That's not a Greek name, is it? Sigurd. It, sounds, it looks like it's Finnish or something. It's a draw. Damn, Uber Driver, serious time deficit. It's a good thing it was Ops Color Bishop endgame. So that's why Camel Culture made that Greek comment. Not two, but three Greeks. All right. We had a total. Uh, Alisto never showed up. He was supposed to be here. Husky just played one game and left. You guys made the new subscriber leave because you ridiculed him for his annoying sir, sir, sir. Thanks to our leading trolls for that. <laughs> you appreciate him now? Oh, you're talking about something else. All right, I've got five points. At least we've played many strong players. Um, looks like Mahor or Sumaher. Take your pick. They both have three. They're both. No, I already played Sumaher. I have to play Mahor. Possibly Uber Driver, but it should be Mahor. Um, World Loser. Sumaher. World Loser won. He's got four out of five. Very good score against Arsenal. Juicebox, you think Lazar? What are you guys talking about? Lazar is a, is a typical name here. Typical name here in Hungary and um, Serbia probably too. Oh, the guy who broke the Area 51 story? Oh my god. Are we on that now? I'll have to check it out. You can't go wrong with... You can't go wrong with alien... Alien discussions. It's... It's interesting and, and not that political. Um... I had a funny idea to play F6 here today. I was like, man, that's a bad move. <laughs> Knight F3, F6, D4. I mean, obviously all moves are good there. I don't know what I was thinking. It was a weird dream state I was in. I played like Knight F3, H6. I was like, what if you played F6 against Knight F3? Knight F3? How bad would it be? And then I started to actually think about what would happen, and I was like, yep. That's not a good idea. So reverse Grun Grunfeld. Grunfeld. Reverse Grunfeld. I like it. Through the X Files, that's where all the that's where all the anti-vax stuff came from, man. Ninety-nine percent of anti-vaxxers are like huge X Files fans. I'd almost guarantee it. They think the smoking man is real, and all all X Files episodes are are based on reality. That's where the whole concept of like Bill Gates. You know, putting putting chips in our... They're just like desperate X-Files fans. 
it's so 90s like I mean, get a life seriously the government is 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 messing with your with your vaccine they're putting strange shit in there sure they are it's an excellent X-Files plotline. All right, what are we going to do? Yes, we all trust the pharmaceutical companies, Bob. And all companies, for that matter, are very trustworthy, as well as governments in general. But nevertheless, That guy's clearly thought about it too much. So it's like a reverse Grunfeld with C3, which is not a really useful move. I mean, Black needs C4 to break break my center. So whatever, I mean, we're, we're basically white in a Grunfeld with like the free move queen b6, which is rather neutral. You come here for the interesting conversation and stay for the chess, right? Chest master. Don't call me sir. I'm a chest master. See, now there's C4. I've got my free move. Chest trainer. I forget who asked that. That was some. It was some insurance agent or real estate agent or somebody. She was like, "What's your email?" And I'm like, "Sigh." Here we go again. Video chess. You know, like the game chess. Trainer. And you have to like spell trainer for them because that's way beyond most people's capability. So what am I doing here, seriously? Rook B8 is always a good idea. So that queen gets trapped on A8, glump glump, yummy yummy. Bishop e7, take, take, take. Take it, take it. Castle, goodbye. Yeah, I'm going to just play bishop e7. Do I have a problem, though, with knight c3? Do you have a problem, sir? Maybe I have a problem here with knight c3. So bishop e6 is really necessary. And then I have a problem with queen a4. There's always some problems. I have to play this? I'm like a tempo up for free. Why would this be a problem? smartest guys in the channel oof Bob is a member of obvious member of Mensa it is your place to determine that I'm sorry Bob I'm just kidding around man I know I know I get I, it's a sign I love you when I start zoning in on people. I did the same thing to a friend of mine at a poker game when I was drunk. My best friend, I guess I have com kind of competitive feelings against him. And when I was drunk, I started like going all in against him with some really bad hands and like just, just to see if I could bad beat him. And just bad beating him like for the fun of it. But it was a sign of love. He still doesn't forgive me for like cracking his aces with like 5-8 or something like that. It's a sign of love. Um, <clears throat> my inner my inner self comes out more when I'm when I'm drinking. Haven't been drinking enough. 
let this the inner self come come loose here let's try rook d8 whoa mother of oh my god what did i just do mother of of sizing size size queen queen size all right i just sized my board grabber camel culture has that problem too he's like grabbing things in the in the wrong moment Whooper, whoopie. Oh, and another interesting, another interesting, um, weekly update. Kyle Rittenhouse is like gonna sue Whoopi, Whoopi, Whoopi Goldberg and other people for slandering him and calling him a murderer. I don't know, man. I'm not really liking his chances. I'm sorry. I mean, I know he's going to get a lot of a lot of media coverage like Sarah Palin. But I don't think like calling a murderer a murderer is like slander. I mean, you can be a murderer and not be convicted, right? I mean, you're still a murderer. I mean, that's that's in the jury of that's up to the jury of 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 society, really. You can be declared in, you know, innocent and still be a murderer. I don't think he has a shot in hell of like suing people for slandering him. Yeah. He's defending a team dedicated to defending people canceled by the media. I mean, maybe he could defend other people, but I don't think he has a shot in hell. I mean, definition of a murderer is, is kind of like in the dictionary. Someone who kills other people. You know, I mean, he still murdered them, whether it was like legal or not. Technically, I, I think it's 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 pretty clear. Yeah, Bob, you should get in on that. Maybe start a tax exempt company with him. You guys would get along great. Yeah, it's all for the media hype. Man, Sarah Palin just got nuked by the New York Times. But they have they have a lot of money. Actually, Whoopi has a lot of money too. But how much does she really care? Um, man, this is a tough game, man. Mahar beat me last time. He's playing playing pretty well. I thought, oh, I've got a protected pass pawn here. Of course, he's all set for life. All you got to do is like murder someone. for the sake of the far right and you're you're set for life the lawyers are the ones that make all the money I was thinking about that lawsuit, um, speaking of chess, the way that uh, they're suing the Queen's Gambit for misrepresenting facts about um, the Georgian Grandmaster, women's Grandmaster, or Grandmaster, what's her name? The law it's just lawyers that are going to make a lot of money from that at the end of the day. So what are we doing here? Wow. I don't know. Mahar seems super strong lately. Something's going on with him. He's gotten stronger. What is up with this position? Dude is like brutal. Wait.
I had this crazy score against him. Now I lost and I'm going to lose again. A movie deal. I don't know, man. I don't know about that, but definitely books. Fox. My god. The guy is brutally strong. He's really, really strong. This is guy's deal. Finally, I got something going. Oh my god. Just continues. <sighs> wow. player is really, really strong for the rating. He's gotten better. Can't believe I had so many wins against him. <sighs> he couldn't play... He wants to play like H4 or G5 or something. That was even worse. I mean, not much better than my game with World Loser. I was I was probably just lost. Mel Gibson, that's a good one. With um with your friend from Seinfeld. How are we doing on time? Alright, I've got six points. We're a loser with four and a half. In second place by a full point. Wow. Sumahair with three and a half. Chemiculture with three and a half. Dinekis, wow, nice score. Three and a half. Arsenal dropping down to three. Mahar with three. Deruin has a good score of three. Anybody with half half the possible points I think is doing well. Uber just two and a half out of four games he's out. Sigur, two and a half. Astrobate got me a forfeit win. No nonsense. That's a pretty cool pun. I like that. No nonsense. Michael Richards. Plenty of controversial throwback figures around that have been canceled. It's a good business. Ron Jeremy, great. What's, I was wondering what happened to Ron Jeremy now. Is he like in jail or is he just like awaiting trial? What's the latest on Ron Jeremy? Is he a free man? Are you serious? You don't know? Dude, he was like facing serious charges. Man, you're totally out of the loop. That's unbelievable. Can't believe you guys don't know about that. I don't even follow the porn news, but everyone knows that. Arsenal and Bob out of the loop? Unbelievable. I mean, it's not like fresh news or anything.
That's been, what, way over a year ago. You would know stuff like that. <clears throat> Bishop g5, nice. Someone played queen b6 against me last week. What's that about? Truth. Truth Media is my new homepage. Are you serious? It's truth. The truth app. Scammers.com. Now what am I going to do? This should be four, right? Boo! I'm gonna get me a beer. There is little truth in Pravda. Sounds like the Hungarian media, state media. Man, I was sweating bullets there. If he takes on c6, it's a forced draw. There goes my perfect score. The weed master and I had a draw at the World Open once, where I like forced him. I like forced him to agree to a draw, where he was. Actually, I don't remember whether I was white or black, but I made him. I made him agree me a draw. Of course, I was like higher rated. I think I don't remember. Queen takes d five. I don't like playing against my friends. I like playing against my enemies better. Or at least neutral parties. I just don't like playing against my friends. It's hard, you know, it's hard to generate the Kasparovian hate that's that's essential to like beat one's opponents when you face your own friends. No, but seriously, I mean that is there I don't think there's a way for black to play for a win here. I think you have to like take the perpetual bishop c3, bc3, queen c3 check, king e2, bishop g4 check, f3, castles, pawn takes g4, rook e8 check, and then like king uh, or something like that. I don't know. I Maybe I screwed it up in um, my description, but it's a perpetual check. I got confused. But rook c1 is new. I don't know that one. So I can take a pawn here with queen a2. I mean, that's insanely materialistic. It reminds me of like the wing gambit or something. Queen takes a2, d5, queen takes b2. That doesn't doesn't seem right actually. Queen takes a2 might be possible. It's like a computer variation. Well, definitely I I could think about it maybe next move. Yeah, I think it's it's the drugs. Uber driver. They up my medication. My psychiatrist will be happy. I'm like undefeated for, for one simul and this is like, I haven't lost a game in like three days. Although I was damn close like four times, to be honest. So I'm just kind of kidding around. This is dangerous. It's just dangerous. I'm not doing that. I could take on c3, take on a2. 
What's objectively the best move here? Just stay active, dude. I don't know, it feels so materialistic. Queen A2, castles. Queen takes B2. I could sack my queen. Queen A2, castles. No, I don't love it. You know, I really don't love it. I want a blockade. Well, there goes that opportunity. We're gonna just play for, for positional ideas here. Wow, that's unbelievable. You gotta take with the pawn, I mean, fix your center. I can't believe he's taking it this way. I can't believe he's taking it this well. Rook takes is playable, but I mean, come on, that center is so strong. I don't know. I prefer B takes. I agree that they're both playable. Maybe I'm overreacting, being overly critical of rook takes. I guess it's stylistic. A stylistic choice. I know I should have taken the pawn on A2. But it just seemed, it seemed like kind of inherently risky. Like why should I risk anything here? Why ask why, Bob? Yeah, even if... Exactly, Uber Driver. Exactly. That's the problem with this position. Thank you. You've you figured out the secret of, of chess. Even if he loses the pawn, who the blink cares, right? Right. Who the bleep? The bleeping bleep. Bleeping bleeps. I'm not materialistic at all. I'm just trying to play knight c4 and get, get this good outpost here. Sees everything. Sees or <clears throat> so now we get to test the great Uber diver, Uber diver, Uber diver, Uber diver. Maybe nine C four was better, Arsenal. Maybe it was better. Probably was, honestly. After all that bluffing. I'm I'm better, but I mean it's it's objectively probably drawish. Thanks, Mr. Mr. Mubot. Mr. Coffee, you can find the command list. Don't forget to check out my YouTube channel. Arena. Whoa. There's an arena. There's an arena command? Man, I hope we still don't have an arena command. I should do an arena, though. No. I mean, not really, move 11. That's a good question. Is there a signal for declining a draw? That's... No. You can say, you know, it's rude to... I know, it's not really considered rude. I think the truth is, um... The truth hurts. I could, like, sack... I could sack a piece here. Um... But too low on time. No, I mean, it's kind of like everybody does their own way of doing it. It's okay to just ignore it. 
I think it's more polite to make like a quiet, I'd like to play on, you know, that's, that's kind of the standard to politely answer, but it's certainly not like required. If they do it twice, though, then you go nuts, and you start telling them you'd rather die than have a draw. Some really strong player I heard did that. Wow, Bobby Fischer did that? Seriously? To Geller? For real? Wow. I never heard that. I mean, I could... Defermian told me to shut up, but he was like, we were in really bad time pressure. And then he lost some time. I was really sorry. That was a game that Geller won. Well, it is rude to offer on your opponent's time. But in my case, I did it because Nick was about to flag. The A pawn has left the building. Probably that kind of a stupid move by me, um, but whatever. When I play b3, he can play bishop c4. I'll win eventually. All right, camel culture, another win. Good thing I don't have to play him twice. Camel culture and world loser are tied. Arsenal with four, taking out acerbate. What was that opening, I wonder? Accelerated Dragon? What, what did you play against Acerbate Sicilian Arsenal? Sumahar lost against Sigur. Dinekis lost against me. Vague is, is in late. He's the strongest 1400 in the world, or the second strongest. There was another one recently. Mahor is out. Uruinus is out. We've got two rounds remaining. Ernie Els is out. Don't Cry Wolf just came to say hi. Ripun played one game, and Oliver Lucas just two. Guys, don't forget it was Smith Mora. Arsenal, you played a Smith Mora? I prefer to call it the Smith. Um, all right. Oh, Mr. Coffee. Didn't notice that. Guys, don't forget to support the stream. The new me. The unbeatable. Don't thank me. Thank my psychiatrist. <laughs> Alright, no, seriously. What would you say your rating would be? Well, in Blitz, you seem more like 1900. 1819. Alright. I've been kind of lucky. I always say that I'm lucky, but I haven't won these games cleanly. You know, and that's usual. We're not winning clean games here. Oh, now I play vague. See? 
He's so weak, he's playing the tournament leader in round 8. You see? Oh, that's a different player. Oh, you're... Yeah, that's you. Well, now it, now it makes sense. And now it all makes sense. So why are you 1461 here? That doesn't make sense. You're 1870 on the com? I mean... Aren't the ratings here actually more inflated? Their big thing was like on the evil chess site, they, they're afraid people will like play here because the ratings are more inflated and it makes them feel better about themselves from what I heard. They're afraid they're losing members. Ah. You started here, went to the evil chess site, and came back. Well, you've come to the right place. No commercials. Only for the chess here. It's not for private. The private benefit of some random people. So this is weird. <clears throat> Black playing c5 radically early. Radical, dude. It's radically early. C takes d5. It's a good Tarash for me. Now that's... Bishop takes e7, I guess. For lack of a better good move. Weird. Vogue. His other account is Vogue. Vogue or Vague, depending on his mood that day. I don't know. I've been, I've been a little more. I still have some brain fog, but I, I seem a little more clear-headed. The last couple of streams, I couldn't really explain the simul result, but I don't think it was like the strongest. Maybe it was just random. Why my simul was undefeated? I'm so modest. I'm so modest. Why was I undefeated? I've had a good week last week. Look at this knight c6 exclamation point. Sacking a pawn for dynamism. Wow. Does that work? Queen takes d5. Dude, whatever. Why didn't you take the pawn? That's pretty deep. Too deep for me. I should just protect it probably with rook c1, objectively. Just a run of the mill 1400. There's nothing strange about that. Scheming the queen trade? What do you mean? Like I win if I trade queens or something? I'm not Sheber Spieler. It is true that most people play the end game. Most people under master level play the end game badly. But it's not universally true, especially not with the typical 1400s. I said this last stream, and I mean it. You know, the players between 1200 and 1700 are far more dangerous than the ones between 17 and 2000. I've noticed that consistently here. 
again, he's like sacrificing his d5 pawn. That's unbelievable, right? Very, very dynamic thing to do. Fourteen hundreds don't sacrifice their d d five pawn in that position. They they are very materialistic. Like why not play queen d six? Avoiding queen b four. I mean, you know, objectively, yeah. Give him credit. Yeah, Bob, of course. You've been reading too much Chess Space India. But he does have a really cool name. I don't know, the guy played in a tournament here and he didn't even like realize his opponent made an illegal move. And then and then the Indian like players were all up in arms about something later. Like you think you'd like at least know if your opponent made an illegal move. That's a bad sign. That was funny. Lebo like moved his king and then castled later, and the guy didn't call him on it. Like, what? No, I think that, that doesn't bode well for becoming world champion. You don't notice your opponents make illegal moves. Mm -hmm. Top of floor? Yeah, very, very 1400-ish, this player. Extremely 1400. Nothing suspicious about that or anything. Well, we'll see when his last game was. If it was like three years ago, I'll accept it, you know. If it was like last month, I'd say there's something fishy going on. But we've already been through this before. So I just kind of, I'm kind of bored with it. But 1400s don't play like 2000s. <laughs> Obviously. That's a non-starter. Yeah, that's a bad sign. Well, he only has 199 games, man. How regularly can you play? I mean, to be honest. <laughs> regularly. Some people have like 30,000 games here. Yeah, it's pretty sus though. I don't understand. So those are just like the rated games. Yeah, that's weird. I agree, there's something weird. It's not possible to play like your 2000 when you're 1400. But I've already said this like a bunch of times playing this guy. It's obvious something isn't right. You didn't have you down as a London system player? Oh, Camel Culture did the London system? Yeah, we frown on that around here. Now we get to see Flor Capablanca. He's going to literally turn into... Yeah, there's nothing suspicious about this at all. I mean, give me a break, dude.
You're literally playing like Capablanca. Whatever. It's over. It's a draw. Of course it's over. Capablanca already proved it's a draw. It's almost the identical position. The fact that his pawn is on a6 is not enough for me to win. I really doubt it. Dude, you know how sus this is? That's a bad move, though. A, you know, B5 might be a losing move, for real. Wow, that's like the worst move he made the whole game. Only when he got low on time. Interesting. Yeah, now he just like fell apart with no time left. Nothing, nothing weird about that. We go into the king and pawn game, or we look behind behind door number two. I guess we'll take the easy, clear win. Of course, it's like one of the most classic endgames in history. The bishop, the bad bishop, even with an isolated pawn, is not enough for white to win. And I think even with this guy's pawn on a6, it's not enough to win. But pawn on b5 is enough to win. That goes over the that goes over the edge. But I mean, obviously, anybody who played this well the whole game would probably know that, or should know that. If you're good enough to play this well this entire game, you should probably know that. Even here, h5 is a good try. Got good chances. He's quick, too. Am I about to draw? I mean, he's been lost for like the last 20 moves. But I mean, the thing was, it's like a theoretically drawn position around move 30, 5. It's really weird that he doesn't resign either. All right. Yeah, I don't know what to say. I mean, it's just extremely strange. Extremely strange to have like a drawn position against the 1400 on basically move 31. And then the guy like plays B5 when he gets down to 30 seconds. But I'm just being paranoid, you know, there's nothing weird about this. One blunder. <laughs> yeah. Alright. That's my paranoia. Anyway, 8-0 eight, eight by a miracle. My favorite was when I submit games to, to like, Lee Chess where I, where I won. And I'm like, here, and this is the point where... This is the point where my opponent, like, you know, couldn't move fast enough because he was... He was like a bad like computer. It's weird to like submit games you won to prove that people cheated. You know, they just like can't move fast enough and you're able to like flag them. Like the really those real that's the most satisfying wins actually. When you actually beat the computer cheaters. It's really sad that, you know, you're blatantly suspicious and trying to deny it when everyone here thinks that you're suspicious. All right. He can't put any more pawns on white squares. But honestly, anybody good enough to get to that position in the first place would know that, you know. You're going to bat for him. Absolutely. You go, Juicebox. If he wasn't, like, belligerent, 
I might, I wouldn't ban him, but that's like the last straw. Every game I played with him, he played like he was 2000 plus. And he continues to have a 1400 rating. No. Something's not right there. I mean, clearly they're not like using the computer for every single move, but I mean, sorry. Bob did research and he said he's got he's got active games here. I trusted Bob. Dude. I'm just trusting Bob on everything. Careful, careful. <sighs> Math teacher variation. <laughs> Yeah, he played his opening moves, and then some... Dude, he didn't just play that way, Juicebox Wizard. I'm telling you, this guy plays like he's over 2,000. The whole game was good. It wasn't just his opening moves. He made multiple, like, very sharp, dynamic pawn sacrifices in the opening that I was very, very afraid to take. You know, he kept playing dynamically. No, he's not a 1,400 who got lucky to get to a drawn ending, man. I mean, the guy... The guy was really playing well. Bob, did you lie? But Juicebox underestimates. He played his opening moves and then some endgame stuff. You underestimate the guy's play. I mean, he, he played extremely subtle, kind of smart pawn sacrifices in the opening. 1400s don't do that. He had a drawn position after move 31. If nothing else, it's like rating manipulation. So what's going on here? It's enough reason to be suspicious, for sure. So that, that's a nasty move. He's threatening my pawn. Stop threatening my pawn. Weird queen on b3. Dude, he established his rating of 1400. I have nothing else to say, you know. Fourteen hundreds don't play like two thousands, you know, I'm sorry, that's not how it works. And this isn't the first game I played with them. It was like the fourth one, and every single time it was the same. It wasn't like a one off. And Lee Chess has like inflated ratings. Seriously. Exactly. He said he's 1800 on chess.com. He should be like 2200 here. Exactly. It just doesn't make sense, you know? It's just not true. Lee chess ratings are actually, they're actually higher, not lower. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Chalky, chalky cheese. Ruslan off for draw. I am 8 and 0, oh, and you expect me to take a draw? I can't do that. You know, the thing that irritates me is like, you know, 
he is absolutely suspicious, and I have every reason to be suspicious of him. But when these people are like, they're all up in arms, like, how dare you be suspicious of me? That's when I really get irritated. You know, how could I not be suspicious of you? Seriously, how can you accuse me of cheating? That, you know, the people that don't cheat are actually usually take it better. I think the people that do cheat are the ones that are like, oh, you're, you're, cha you're challenging me, you know? I agree, nothing's 100%. You get insulted for everything, Arsenal. <laughs> You're easily bent out of shape, as my dad used to say. Me too, for that matter. But you know a funny thing? I've never been accused of cheating. Wonder why. <laughs> Couldn't imagine why. Maybe maybe because I don't cheat. Funny coincidence, isn't it? Exactly, Juicebox Wizard. That's weird. Exactly. That is weird. I felt the same way. He's like, you should investigate my games on Chess.com. Yeah, like what? That is, that is strange. I agree. That was, that's also strange. It's my job to, you're guilty until proven innocent. That's how it works here. Get over it. This is not a democracy. It's okay to occasionally play the London system, Arsenal, as long as it's not your main opening. Camel Culture knows how to play like mainline Queen Pawn stuff. He seems like a really, you know, kind of well rounded player to me. Um, but it's I don't think it's bad if as long as it's not like you just play the London system. You know, I've played the London system on occasion. The point is that it's not the only thing you play, because then you're like a disgusting sort of robot who, you know, destroys the fun in chess. Like, Rubenstein is the perfect example. If Rubenstein can do it, Camel Culture can do it, you know? Dude, it's not just him. I mean, all the top players are playing the London system. A lot of them. The, the worst The worst example is Dubov. It's sick. It's just sick. But he's young, you know? Maybe he just doesn't understand. I can't believe Dubov is playing the London system. What a creative player. Why would he do that? What are you thinking? He has such interesting ideas in other in other openings. The Dubov to play the London system? Seriously? He's like the last player to play the London system. Maybe because he was hanging out with Magnus. Magnus Magnus was probably prepping the London system. And so now Dubov has nothing else to do with all this like Magnus prep instead of you know he has to start playing the he has to start playing the London too. Like Magnus forced him to learn the London. Literally that's probably what it is. Are bishops better than knights? Oh yeah. Bishops are better than knights. Hello I can't get this into some of my students' heads. Every time, I, I have this new thing. I'm gonna make them sign like a waiver form. If you're gonna trade a bishop for a knight, you need to sign this form, send it to me, I'll have to like approve it, and then you can trade your bishop for a knight. Seriously. It's like a note from your doctor. 
You are not going to trade your bishops for knights unless you have a freaking good reason to do it. This this knight is it's not even close to a bishop. I want to see your waiver before you do that anymore. One certain student of mine did it two games in the same tournament. Right after I told them not to do it, they did it again. It's just ridiculous. You know what? I realized what it is with Arsenal. He, he likes kind of Bob has this too but he, he likes to uh, to take the other side of the argument no matter what it is and we all enjoy that right everybody enjoys that how do you, how do you say that when people they're con they like to be contrary the debate team I mean obviously I, I think Knights can be very strong but the problem is like people are just like acting like they read a Bruce Pandolfini book where it says like knights are worth three and, and bishops are worth three and that's it man for the rest of their life they're exactly the same value it's really sad devil's advocate exactly bishop f4 pisses me off too I mean I've promoted hatred for the London system camel culture you know I'm like the leading hater of the London and I've definitely had an influence on people here. But my argument, what I was going to say earlier, was that Rubenstein was, you know, one of the greatest players of all time, obviously, one of my favorites. But he did play the London. He was like the greatest London player, London system player of all time. Maybe one of the greatest Pichino players of all time. Not just endgame players, but overall, you know, altogether, greatest positional players in every sense of the word. Um, but he played mainline queen pawn. He played e4. He played everything, you know, everything, and and way ahead of his time. Rubinstein was like eighty years ahead of his time in understanding opening opening theory. Wait, what's the plan again? Yeah, Ruslan has a style. The I always get a bad position, but I'm fast. And just, I'm a miraculous defender. Being in bad positions is a prerequisite for, for being a good defender. Anatoly Karpov regularly being in bad positions. We're going to have to bust the F5 at some point. All right, bishops are better than knights. That's the lesson from this game. Back to tournament. We won 9-0, 25-03. Someone is trying to join our team. What time is it? 9.15. Wow, Dinekis got third. Nice job. Dinekis third on tiebreak, eking out eking out the tiebreak with a win in the last round against World Loser. Wow, they were playing for, for third place. Camel had the win. No, actually. Camel only needed a draw, but he won against Astrobate anyway. That's brutal, dude. You could have given him a draw. 
You could have given him a draw, but you didn't know you could because World Loser was the actual favorite, and World Loser could have got six half. Camel Culture had to play for the win to take Acerbate down to guarantee second place, and um, no mercy for Acerbate. So Dinek is congratulations. I don't think he's ever made the top three. Very strong performance tonight. Um, five and a half out of nine. Camel Culture, thanks for playing. Why aren't you a national master yet, by the way? Camel Culture, six and a half, second place. Um, Dinakis, five and a half, World Loser, five and a half, tied for, for third, but out on tiebreak. Arsenal fan, five wins and four losses, no draws. You get the fighting. Camel Culture got 2189 USCF this past weekend. Nice. 11 points away from National Master. Good job. You'll make it very soon. Um, all right, Arsenal fan undefeated. The Greek team. Oh, there, there was no... Jim didn't play, did he? Greek team, four and a half. Two Greek players in the top six. Ruslan, Ukraine and Greece dominating. Ruslan and me, first and seventh. Sumaher with three and a half. Actually, he got three and a half without playing the last round. He still finished ahead. Uber driver dropped out. Vague. Controversial. Um, Mahar dropped out. Everyone else kind of dropped out except for Astrobate, who finished with two points. Thanks, everybody, for playing. Um, we will be back tomorrow with Weird Wednesday uh, opening stream. Weird Openings Blitz stream. So that's three days. Keep my fingers crossed. Three days without without losing. Um, lucky, though. I had a couple of lost positions last night and again today. So I'm just fighting my way. Fighting my way uh, to surviving lost positions. As I said, those of us who, who are used to getting bad positions become good defenders. All right, guys. Thanks for playing. Congratulations to the top three finishers. And uh, thanks to Mr. Coffee for sticking with us. Appreciate it. Um, don't forget guys, we've got, uh, we've got to ask for your support. If you can subscribe or donate, much appreciated. Thanks everybody. Let's see if anybody's streaming here. Actually, I thought Tranquilizer might, might stream, but he's not streaming. So I'm out. Um, we'll be back tomorrow morning at 11 AM. Thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.